Hello, this video is sponsored by Wondrium. I'm Lawrence Brown and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to pets. Specifically, the words we use to describe their world. Since moving to the United States, pets have been a big part of my life, from those of my in-laws to this beautiful doggy right here. And the cat. I was going to mention the cat. One thing that's not a lie is my subscriber count, which passed half a million on Friday. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, do that now. Now, I've promised Arthur here that if he's a good boy throughout the filming of this entire video, he will get to go on his very first car wash. You don't understand a word I'm saying, do you? And so until then, I'm going to leave him to it and head on over to the couch. Some British versus American word differences cause more problems than others. I discovered this the hard way shortly after moving to the United States, but specifically shortly after moving in with my American in-laws. Like me, they were a big fan of animals and had approximately 47 pets exactly. And I became friendly with them all. They'd sit on my lap, lick my face and steal my socks. And I would often do this to them. And as you can see, I am petting an invisible animal because my cat, unprofessional as he is, has disappeared at the wrong time. And one time, while this was happening, happening and all of the American humans were present, I remember saying, I love stroking dogs. Needless to say, there was a brief period when my in-laws looked at me as if to say, I think we might need to call the Department of Homeland Security, but in an American accent. And I had to explain very rapidly, no, it's not what you think. Stroking is just the British word for petting. It's honestly a word I haven't used since that very moment. And ladies and gentlemen, I am today a United States citizen. Arthur, what are you doing? What do you think, Mr. Kafka? Oh, look at that stare. But as humans, it's not just the language that we use with each other that is different from one side of the pond to the other. Sometimes you have to vary the way you speak to your pet. And since our puppy, Arthur, is technically American, I had no choice but to utilize American English words. Does it matter? It doesn't matter, does it? And one of those words is a word that I cannot currently say, not because it's a swear word, but because the dog is within earshot of me and he might just go. For now, I'll just spell it out. G O space P O T T Y. And go potty. Arthur wanna go potty. You wanna go potty. Bobby got distracted. No, the wrong way. And weirdly, since the P word very much exists in Britain, given how we train infants to go to the toilet, I only heard the phrase G-O space P-O-T-T-Y after moving to the United States. And while making this video, I've been asking myself, ooh, Lawrence, what did you used to say when you had a dog in Britain? And I can't fully remember. Maybe it was something like go poo poo or go pee pee. Either way, it had peas in it and carrots. What is it, Mr. Arthur? Are you looking for your friend? Who is your friend? Tell the audience who your friend is. That's right. It's Kafka. Where did he go? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? I just saw him. Oh, oh, oh no. He's here. There's a standoff. Speaking of pet training, did you know that among its thousands of educational courses, Wondrium has plenty on dog training? <laughs> Recently, Arthur and I have really benefited from Dog Training 101, which is a course specifically designed to train in the good behavior and train out the bad. Your dog can be trained to walk politely past a piece of greasy bacon lying just inches away. And when I adopted Arthur, my first concern was, oh no, I'm never gonna have the time or the sweatpants to attend an actual dog training class. What am I gonna do? But thankfully, Dog Training 101 helped me understand the often hilarious behavior of my dog and what, if anything, I should do differently. And the best part is, I can take the course from literally anywhere. And as longtime fans of Lost in the Pond will know, Wondrium's library of content extends way beyond pet training. For instance, my personal favorites center around American English or US history. And as it happens, Wondrium is giving my viewers the fantastic offer of a free trial. Show your support for Lost in the Pond by subscribing to Wondrium today. Visit wondrium.com slash lost in the pond right now to begin your free trial. The link is in my description below. When I did live with my in-laws all those years ago, I witnessed a horrible incident, unfortunately this is true, in which a cat got flattened under a car. And it just so happened that in the car behind that one was a police officer who saw the whole thing. He walked up to the cat as we all watched it breathe its last breath, picked it up by the tail and dumped it by the side of the road. And at the same time thinking, if I was in England, what would I do? I don't know, I'd probably call the RSPCA. That's the Royal Society of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Sure, maybe technically you can't be cruel to a dead animal, but the question still remained in my mind, does America have an equivalent of the RSPCA? And the answer is, not only does it, but it goes by a very similar name. And that name is the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. <laughs> 
what are the chances? Well, it turns out there's a reason for this coincidence, which is not a coincidence at all. During the 19th century, the American diplomat Henry Berg became greatly affected after witnessing animal cruelty on the continent. While in England, he met with the president of the recently formed RSPCA, Lord Harrowby, who talked up the importance of the society. This convinced Berg to found the ASPCA back in his hometown of New York City in 1866. It has been headquartered there ever since. If you've seen my YouTube shorts, you'll know that I like to talk about words, and sometimes those words are long, scientific sounding, and at other times they're short and snappy, a little bit like Arthur. Take for instance a literal pet name that I often hear in these parts of the United States and that word is Bob. And Bob is not typically the dog's legal name or anything like that, it's simply a nickname. Need to go potty Bob? Bob, that's a building site. Let's go Bob. Keep moving Bob. This way Bob. Keep going Bobba Binks. No, that's not yours, Bubba the Hutt. You're just every Star Wars character, aren't you, Bubba Fett? Bob the Builder. Can he fix it? Generally speaking, he does the opposite. Come on, let's go destroy some stuff, Bob. Good, Bubba. I'm starting to forget your actual name. Arthur. Arthur. Keep going, Arthur. And he got me asking the question in the last few minutes, what is it with this word, Bob? So I looked it up. Bob, noun, informal, North American, an aggressive or rude way of addressing a boy or man. So then why have I only heard it as a term of endearment to describe both a boy and a puppy? Have I been unknowingly insulting my dog and undermining his self-confidence forever? Doesn't even bear thinking about. My puppy thinks I'm a cow. And finally, this, the device with which we train our dog outside. One of the absolute best times of my day is when I get to take Arthur for a walk, and this is something that once or twice I got to experience as a child with Benji, the Jack Russell of my youth. And the word that I, as well as most British people, would use to describe this very thing is lead, to give the suggestion, perhaps, that the dog leads the way. But that's not really the idea when you're training your dog to walk with you. You really want them to walk by your side. But either way, the American English word, which I was not aware of until I moved to the United States, is leash. Which is logical, because you're supposed to keep them leashed next to your ankle. Unless they're an ankle biter, which Arthur very much is right now. Arthur, do you want to go for a beer with Kafka? This is a metaphorical beer. I'd never, ever let my pets drink alcohol. What do you think, Arthur? Come on, let's just walk across the pretend flowers. It's never stopped you before on real flowers. And there's Kafka. Anything could happen. Does Mr. Arthur eat? No, he wants food. Anyway, those are just some of the pet-related words that I picked up after moving to the United States. And because he's been a very good puppy, hasn't said a word during this video, it's time to take Arthur to his first ever car wash. All right, mate, are you ready to go on your first ever car wash? We'll get your harness, but I think it's in the car. Let's go. You having the best time? That's it for this episode. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. Fans of animal related videos might want to travel back in time to when some morning doves set up a nest on my window ledge. Finally, a big thank you to all of my patrons who continue to make my videos better. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye. Oh, it's that missing glove.